This episode of the Astro Powder Podcast is brought to you by Gama. Gama's Optiflex Pro Manual Gun uses Power Boost technology, which gives you the industry's highest charging power at 110,000 volts and 110 microamps, allowing for faster and more efficient powder coating. We're handing you more power, more quality, and more control. For a demonstration, call 877 437 6771. Once again, that's 877 437 6771. And be sure to mention, Ask Joe sent me. When you want to know that everything is covered, complete it with Gama. <laughs> Hello all you powder coating fans and welcome to episode 36 of the Ask Joe Powder Podcast. That's three dozen, Nate. Three dozen. <laughs> good job. Pretty good with those numbers today. I'm your host, Joe Powder, aka Kevin Biller. And with me as always is my esteemed colleague, sidekick, Nathan He's ChemQuest Powder Coating Research's formulator, dude. We're coming to you from the number 13 podcast on the Apple Chemistry Podcast Chart for Turkey. We're broadcasting from the ChemQuest Powder Coating Research Studios in Columbus, Ohio. The purpose of the Ask Joe Powder podcast is to bring the latest news and technical know-how to the global powder coating community. Let's get it rolling. Yes, but before we do, I have a couple of shout-outs. Shout-out. Number one, I'd like to wish all our friends in a different part of the world a happy Diwali. May the light displace the darkness. You know, you all know what we mean. Um, I'd also like to give a kind of a somber shout-out. This one's to Walt Warburn. Uh, you know, and, and especially his family. Walt passed away recently, and he was the chairman of the board and past president of DARTEC. And uh, those those people that are in kind of the middle, mid Atlantic and northeast part of the uh, United States know DARTEC as a, a high quality distributor of materials raw materials and chemicals for the coatings industry. Um, Walt started his career there in 1967. He was coming from a purchasing position with Sherwin-Williams, and Walt led Dartec's history during its period of greatest growth and business expansion. However, his greatest legacy is the friendships and relationships he built over 50-plus years with that company. My first encounters with Walt were the early days in my career, back in the late 1970s. He'd come to the Glidden Research Center and always with a smile on his face, a very professional attitude, a friendly manner, kind of a low-key sales approach. And one of the things I liked about him, he'd always have a unlit cigar in his hand. I thought, cigar smoker, okay, you're okay. So anyway, our hearts go out to Walt's family his uh, wife of 56 years, Karen, and the rest of his family. Uh, Walt, you're a great dude, and uh, you certainly will be missed. Okay, now it's time for news and our Guess What segment. Guess what? All right, this first item comes from PCI Magazine, and they report Diamond Vogel recently celebrated the groundbreaking for its Innovation Center, with a ceremony on October 13th, 2021. Um, their $15 million innovation center is the latest phase of Diamond Vogel's Building on Success initiative that started in 2018, which includes several improvements to its Orange City, Iowa campus. Basically, they're expanding their R&D capabilities. They're adding 36,000 square feet, allow up to 60 research and development scientists to collaborate on improvements and investments to their line of paint and coatings. Yeah, I think that's great news, Nate. Um, you know, Diamond Vogel has uh, been around for a long time, and uh, it's, it's a family-owned and run coatings company, and they've done a, a fantastic job uh, with their business, but also they've done a great job with their community and uh, 
Northwest Iowa. They've, they've really been uh, giving back to the community, and we're very impressed and happy with your success. So um, that's great news. All right, next up um, from Coatings World, PPG introduces a wheel refurbishing solution for commercial transport vehicles. This new refurbishing program features their PPG and Virochron family of powder coatings, and it's to efficiently transform rusty, corroded wheels to near original equipment quality. Um, this we discussed this a little bit with the PPG. Ah, um, oh, the managers. Yeah, the managers. When I had the interview a few bunch of episodes back, go back and listen to more about it. But yeah, it's a corrosion resistance, edge protection, high quality powder coating. Yeah, I think what they they've done is they they've um, this is a plug in for the tire retread centers, which are very ubiquitous. Um, it, it gives them an added service that they can offer to the um, truck industry, uh, which would be, um, as they're doing retreads, they can also uh, refurbish, you know, some steel wheels that kind of shown the weathering and corrosion from the elements. So good thinking, PPG. Okay, friends, let's move on. It's time now for the question and answer portion of our podcast. Do you have a question? Ask Joe Powder. Well, you can ask him. Ask Joe Powder. He has the answer. That old answer. Powder coating. It's the Ask Joe Powder podcast. Okay, the first one comes from Dalton in Michigan. He says, Dear Joe, we're having an issue with powdering red and it covering. Is there any specific setting on our guns that we could try? And do you have any suggestions? Okay, Dalton. Sounds like a good little problem on your hands and hey one thing i really like about you know talking to people that spray powder they've got their own jargon you know people say you know powdering red it's where powder becomes a verb nate so yeah we're going to help you here dalton first thing i'm going to recommend very first thing whenever you have trouble with getting coverage with powder coatings um, check your grounds or your earths Make sure the hooks and racks all have a good, solid contact to hangers and conveyors if you have things like that. Uh, best way to test for continuity to earth is using a meg-omer. Uh, meg-omer is a specific ohm meter. Um, it uses high voltage to get the resistance much, much better than using a regular standard, you know, hardware store ohm meter. The resistance should be less than 500 ohms, but preferably closer to 250 ohms. Anything lower than that's great. Um, and the other thing I should say is your ground should ultimately be tethered to a six foot rod that's buried into the soil. So you're going to drill out a hole in your plant floor and and uh, make sure you've got a good earth. The next thing I would check is inspect your guns and ensure that they're charging correctly. You should look at your controller and it should display the microamps of the powder cloud as it exits the gun. Make sure it's reading around 60 microamps. If it's lower than that, the gun may need servicing. The next thing I check is make sure your powder is flowing adequately to your gun. Poor deposition can happen if the powder is clumped and has difficulty moving through the hopper, uh, the powder pumps and the hoses. Uh, and, and I might add, check your powder pumps and hoses for impact fusion. This would be on the inside of the hose or inside the powder pump where powder accumulates um, as it just transfers through these, um, these parts of your application process. The next thing, kind of the last thing I would ensure is that your film thickness is adequate. Make sure it's within the specification per your powder supplier's technical data sheet. You know, bright colors like reds, yellows, and oranges um, usually need a higher film thickness to achieve acceptable opacity. So Dalton, hope these suggestions solve your problem, and give me a holler if you have any other questions. Your powder expert, Joe. And now, a word from our sponsors.
Synchronized monitoring and control of your entire automated process is the core of GAMA's Magic Control 4.0 data management systems, with options like line management, offering deeper insight into productivity and consumption, or energy management, allowing you to monitor and save both energy and air consumption, or batch management, offering tracking of powder used to coat production batches. GAMA provides the very best in technology and connectivity for smarter factory automation. To learn more about GAMA's Magic Control 4.0 data management systems, visit completeitwithgamma.com. When you want to know that everything is covered, complete it with GAMA. The Powder Coating Research Group is now part of the ChemQuest Group, proud sponsor of the Ask Joe Powder podcast. ChemQuest Powder Coating Research is the only independent laboratory dedicated to powder coating technology. We do everything from evaluating raw materials, formulating the next generation of coating, developing new products, consulting, testing, troubleshooting, and training. Our parent company, ChemQuest, provides expert business strategy and advisory services in all aspects of the specialty chemicals value chain, including expertise in both liquid and powder coating. To find out more, visit our website at powdercoatingresearch.com or ChemQuest's website at www.chemquest.com. You can email Kevin Biller at kbiller at chemquest.com. Thanks for listening to the Ask Joe Powder Podcast. All right, we're back. And our next question comes from Stephen in Syracuse, New York. He says, Dear Joe, aluminum versus steel. The coatings are coming out different. The aluminum has a thinner mill build than the steel using the same manual gun. Any thoughts that we could give to our customer? Hi, Stephen. This is an interesting question. Theoretically, there is no reason for powder to deposit differently on steel than it would on aluminum. Both metals are conductive enough to allow an even deposition of powder. So this begs a few questions. As you know, film thickness measurement on ferrous substrates uses a magnetic force to quantify the coating thickness, whereas the film gauge for non-ferrous metals use an eddy current technology. So you want to make sure you're measuring things correctly with the right instrument. Some film gauges have both of these mechanisms, by the way. So make sure you're getting accurate film thickness measurement. Uh, Very important. If this is not the issue, there may be a difference in the path to ground for the aluminum versus the steel, steel substrates. Are the same hooks used for both metals? Are they in different condition? Poor film build is most often caused by a poor ground. So what to do, Stephen. Check out the instrument issue and verify the thickness measurements. Then investigate the continuity to ground. And this is best accomplished using a meg-ohm meter, also known as a megger. Check all these things, Stephen, and if you have any more questions for me, let me know. Best regards, Joe Powder. All right, and this question comes from Terry in Illinois. He says, Joe, I work for an overhead doors company in Illinois, and we powder coat the extruded aluminum rails for one of our product lines. We've had issues in the past when that department tried to change the window caulking to something with silicone in it, and now our management team is wanting to change caulking again. I'm needing your professional opinion and some documentation to confirm that what we experienced before is indeed true. Hi, Terry. Thanks for your questions. Uh, You're being smart to be cautious before allowing someone to make a switch to a silicone-based caulk. Sounds like they tried that in the past, ran into some issues, and sometimes people don't learn. So, yes, it's very important to be uh, cautious making a move like this. So, I can make an assumption and conjecture that The powder coating exhibited film defects such as craters and maybe even fish eyes uh, when the silicone caulk was present. And these occur when a contaminant has a surface energy significantly lower than the resinous portion of the powder coatings. Silicones and other oils, lubricants, and greases all fall under that category. Um, And indeed, other sources can include things like body lotions, cosmetics, textile finishes, and even some fragrances. So 
pay close attention. The contaminant can emanate as a mist, a particulate, or even on a molecular level as a fume. One thing is for sure, most, if not all, silicone-based materials will cause some kind of cratering in a powder coating finish. Even cleaning up contamination usually falls short of eliminating the incident of this type of defect. I would do everything I could to convince your powers that be not to use the silicone caulk. Good luck and let me know how things turn out. Best regards, Joe. Okay, everyone, before we go, let's fill you in on some upcoming events. Hey, friends, where are we going? To an upcoming event. All right. Um, China Coat 2021 is taking place in Shanghai, t- China, between November 16th, 2021, to November 18th. And if you can't make it to the Far East uh, this time of year, you can go to the Eastern Coating Show. That's in Atlantic City, New Jersey. That's November 17th to the 19th. Then um, the 25th through 27th of November in Istanbul, Turkey, is the Paint Expo Eurasia. In Mexico City, Mexico, the 18th through 20th of January 2022 is FITMA. It's a big um, technology and manufacturing conference. That sounds like that'd be fun. Oh, yeah, you think that's fun. Paint India is March 10th through the 12th of 2022 in Mumbai, India. And then this one we're going to, the American Coding Show and Conference, April 5th to April 7th, Indianapolis, Indiana, here in the States. Um, yeah, we're going to have a booth there. So if anyone wants to come by and talk shop. All right. Yeah, be there or be square, my powder coating friends. We'll be there uh, with some... Uh, with a big smile, a handshake, and uh, maybe some uh, help in your powder coating technology needs. Buy me a beer. <laughs> Abra Fadi has finally, um, their dates now are in June 21st through uh, June 23rd of 2022. That's the Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's a big Latin American coatings conference. Okay, before we uh, say goodbye... You can also catch the Ask Joe Powder question and answer column in print and also on the websites of PPCJ, Palmer Paint and Color Journal. All right, you can find us online at askjoepowder.com. If you want to be alerted to every time a irregularly scheduled <laughs> podcast comes out, uh, just subscribe to us on whatever your podcast player is. We're listed on all of them. We have a YouTube channel where we've begun to we've uploaded all of the old episodes. We're also going to be putting um, general instructional videos, the interviews that we do, There's some more multimedia sort of stuff on the YouTube channel. So check that out. Please subscribe. We have Twitter um, at aka Joe Powder, and if you want to ask a question for Joe, the email address is askjoepowder at yahoo dot com. Or you can call and leave us a message, country code 1-478-2-ASK-JOE. That's 1-478-227-5563. This has been a production of the ChemQuest Powder Coating Research. Original music editing, their stingers, and the guy who presses control S when we're done recording, Nick Page. Most of the time. All right, and I just want to thank our one listener from Nepal, our two listeners from Latvia, all six from Libya, and 26 from Poland for uh, tuning in. Yeah, thanks a lot for your support, and keep your powder dry. Thank you for listening to the Astro Powder Podcast. This episode was brought to you by Gamma.
Are you looking for a solution to coat your most difficult products with no touch-up? Then Gama's Dynamic Contouring Equipment is the right solution for you. Unlike robotic coating, Dynamic Contouring offers greater flexibility without all the programming hassle, while correctly positioning each powder gun to automatically coat your parts. For more information, call 877-437-6771. Once again, that's 877-437-6771. And be sure to mention, Ask Joe sent me. Automate it, position it, detect it, code it, complete it with Gamma. Cool, good job, everybody. Uh, I think Let's you got see. your work cut out for you on that one. Nah, I'll be fine. Yeah, I was kind of stumbling around there in the... Whatever. Nah, it'll, it'll be alright. We'll see. Besides, a little secret, you actually can't edit audio, so I've never edited this podcast. Wow. I'll just look at it for a while and then tell you guys I fixed it. And put it up exactly as it was recorded. Pretty, we sound pretty darn good then. Good yard. thing I don't listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll listen to some of it sometimes, but I think your mom listens to it, Nate. Really? Uh, no. Weird.